everyone, and welcome to a very giggly start to this uh, launch event, this celebration of This Is Why They Hate Us by Aaron H. I know we just talked about this, Aceves. Perfect, yeah. I'm Hispanic, I would hope I would say that right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are here to celebrate this wonderful, wonderful debut, right? Debut, yeah. So exciting, round of applause. Um, but before we do all that, we have to go through some rules. Um, the first big one is be respectful in the chat. I'm sure many of you are uh, friends of the author or just fond of Aiden or something. <laughs> so hopefully we'll keep it all respectful. But just a reminder, uh, nothing you wouldn't want your mom or boss to see. That's my rule of thumb. Uh, you can curse, though. I, I won't be mad. <laughs> um, other than that, you can ask questions in the little side tab that looks like a speech bubble and has a little question mark in it. And you can vote on other people's questions if there's something you really want to see answered. Um, Aiden will get to those at the last 10 or 15 minutes, depending on the volume of questions. Um, and the last part, the most important part, we're going to do some magic here. You can buy a copy by pressing that green button down there, <laughs> um, which I really encourage, not just to support your local indie bookstore, but to support a wonderful queer author. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. I'm going to introduce Aiden, and then I will hand it off. Um, Aiden Thomas is a trans, do you prefer Latinx or Latinx? I never know which way to say. Either is fine. People say it both. <laughs> New York Times bestselling author with an MFA in creative writing from Mills College. Originally from Oakland, California, they now make their home in Portland, Oregon. Aiden is notorious for not being able to guess the endings of books and movies and organizes their bookshelves by color. All right. <laughs> with that, I will leave you to. Thank you so much, Laura. Hello, everyone. Hello, Erin. I um, can't tell you how excited I am to be doing this event. Everyone, Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're here to celebrate This Is Why They Hate Us. Erin, Erin H. Aceves is a bisexual Mexican-American writer born and raised in East LA, a personal favorite place of mine. Uh, he graduated from Harvard College and received in his MFA from Columbia University. His fiction has appeared in JMWW, Epiphany, and Them, among other places. He currently lives in Texas, where he serves as an early career Early career prat. Whoa. Okay. I jinxed you. I jinxed you. You did, head. and it's not even the hard word. <laughs> Where he serves as an early career provost fellow at UT Austin, and his debut novel, This Is Why They Hate Us, was released by Shyman and Schuster Books for young readers. Aaron, I feel like we have been waiting forever for this book to come out. Is that correct? Um, that is true. I think it was two forevers and half a century. Um, I think it's yeah. accurate. Um, yeah, and I think and four different launch dates. Is that also right? I had, yeah, four. So three delays, which makes four different release dates. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny. I look back at them and I'm like, oh, remember like March 29th? I was like, I feel yeah. so optimistic and like so happy. And like, oh, no. <laughs> There was like a May 24th, and I'm like, you know, the one the one that got away, I'm like, I yeah. was like, that one. And then there's the April 26th, which is uh, the forgotten one, because it was, it. I, I had April 26th for like a month, and then <laughs> it's in May. And then, of course, August 23rd, yesterday was my, my one. Um, yeah. And it, uh, it actually came out. Yeah, you found your one launch date and everything was right. And that's why it went through. And I feel like that's very fitting um, to be talking about this is why they hate us. Is this not just a series of um, complicated romances? Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, to get us started off with, can you tell us what this is why they hate us is about? Right. So this is why they hate us is about Enrique, a.k.a. Kike. Uh, who is a 17-year-old bisexual Chicano kid growing up in East LA, and uh, he's in love with his best friend, Salim, uh, but doesn't want to ruin the relationship. He doesn't think Salim is into him, and so he tries to get over him. Like, he makes this plan. He's like, over the course of the summer, I'm going to get over him by getting under someone else. Um, right. And so he has these sort of three prospects that he's, like, 
maybe kind of into i mean he's into them physically but he wants something of more substance and so he he gives that a he gives it a go <laughs> and um so i adored this book um it was one of my favorite reads that i have like come across in a really long time especially for uh contemporary because i don't often i know i liked it so much i learned it look at me <laughs> Oh, it's not often that I come across a contemporary that I'm so obsessed with. Uh, can you tell us what the inspiration was behind this? Yeah. Um, also, thank you so much for blurbing. I have to say that every oh time I get. Um, <laughs> I remember like when you blurbed 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garcevilla, I was like, okay, yeah. I have a chance. I'm like, <laughs> like, Aiden can do contemporary, like they can do this. Yeah. Before. Um, and so, um, yeah, that was, that was really great. Uh, yeah, but, and then the first time I couldn't do it because I think I was busy with Sunbearer stuff. So it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. You're like, hey, just kidding, it got pushed. And I was like, oh my God, I can do it. Yeah, <laughs> the same thing happened with Adam where like the oh, first funny. time we reached out when we had our original you know, date, uh, you both were like, oh, like, sorry, like I'm buried in work. And I yeah. like looking at like how everything was going with my book, I was like, I get it. Um, <laughs> But thanks, yeah, thanks to the delay, you two were able to do it. And I was just like, yeah. oh, like, like I dreamed about like having queer Latinx people blurb it. Yeah. Um, especially really successful, amazing people. Um, so anyway, yeah, that, that all worked out. It was great. Um, the inspiration, it wasn't, so this was the third book I finished. It was the fourth book I queried. So like, you know, I have like four YA novels that I've written. And um but with, with those, like I sort of had a concept and I had mm. a scene that I really was working towards and I oh, jumped okay. around based on inspiration and, and ideas I had. But with This Is Why They Hate Us, like I just sat down one day and I had this kid's inner monologue in my head, a 17 year old kid. And I knew he was just in his bedroom, sort of just looking at the ceiling. It's hot. It's California. Like I just had these things. And then he was having a, his monologue was about, um, pleasuring oneself right uh, and how he was just like the first line that came to me was my mom calls it playing with yourself which is indisputably the worst way to put it and I was <laughs> kind of like oh I know this kid immediately I'm like I know this kid and so I just it felt like I was just following him and listening to what he was saying and, and just sort of watching him in a non-creepy way I like right. him um as he was going about his life and and you know crushing on literally everyone he sees I'm like, <laughs> Um, and so it, it wasn't like this thing of like, oh, here's the plot or here's a scene that I really need. It was more just like following like a like documentary style. Um, yeah. So yeah, it just, you know, Kike just came to me and it, it all came from like his personality and how other people would uh, change him in a way. Cause he talks mm -hmm. about a book like when he's with different people, he acts differently. And I sort of sort of like created side characters who would bring out different sides of him and would make him into a different person with each of them. And he was trying to figure out like, which one's me? <laughs> like, yeah, by myself with this person, or like when I'm fun and chaotic or this person when I have to be more serious because they're fun and chaotic. And yeah, it was, yeah, I was just trying to help him figure himself out. Um, and I think maybe we got there a little bit at the end. You definitely got there. Also, that's a, a really cool concept and like way to be like introducing other side characters. That's like, that's genius. I love that. Like, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um, and speaking of incredible characters, could you introduce us to the main cast? Yeah. So there's Kike. Um, and then there's a lot of boys. Um, <laughs> and but uh, I'll start with his best friend, Fabiola. Um, and Fabiola is Afro-Latina. Um, she's she's his ride or die. Um, she's sort of she's based on one of my friends, like her Aries side. Oh um, yeah. So she's chaotic and emotional, like and just you know, uh, and I just really love that dynamic because again, like Kike changes, and so like she's kind of out there and and very straightforward, and he sort of reins her in. Um, and so I love I love their dynamic. They've they have a past, <laughs> like they've sort of hooked up and been like, oh, I don't think we're like supposed to be together, but like that was yeah. fun. Uh, and then so now they're just friends. Um, so there's Fabiola who I love, and then there's um, Salim, and Salim is uh, Kike's best friend who he's in love with and trying not to be in love with. And Salim is definitely a Virgo. Um, he, is, 
I, I think it, it's pretty clear just from the first page when they're texting. It's like I had to give Celine this proper, you know, sort of, you know, he loves grammar. He loves everything. Like, <laughs> um, and, uh, and 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 so that's that's Salim. And then so Kiki is like the more chaotic one with him. Uh, so those are like his his best friends. You know, one of them he like has a past with. The other one he like keeps thinking about their future together, but doesn't want to do that. So then we get to the prospects, and I, <laughs> they're all you know. I, I had to make them sort of um, attractive to Kike, not just physically. Um, so you know, there's like, uh, and I'm like I revealed a lot about myself in terms of like I've dated a lot of people, and I just like. I, I'm like they're all so different. Like I don't really like have, yeah. um, and and so like neither does Kike. So like he has Ziggy Jackson. Ziggy Jackson is similar to Salim in that like he's also probably a Virgo or a Capricorn or maybe even like just a very put together Leo. Like he's like, <laughs> like he he's he's a politician. Like he's like the school's mayor. Like he he is student body president, and he sort of just is like, um. Like he's very put together, and I think that's why Kika is attracted to him because he's like, well, you're like Salim in that way. And then there's um, Tyler Montana, and Tyler Montana, who has the best name for like who he is. I have never come across something so fitting. I just yeah, like it's funny. Like so people are like, oh, how did you come up with this? And I'm like, I went with my first idea. <laughs> like I did not stretch at all. I was just like, <laughs> Tyler Montana, sure. Um, and yeah, so he, uh, the way he's described as a white boy who is a little too into hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, yeah, so he's interesting to follow. And then last but not least, we have um, Manny. Um, we have a team Manny in the chat. Um, <laughs> and that is my agent, Tina Dubois. Thank you so much for making this a reality, Tina. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I I love Manny. He's chaotic. He yeah. is he is a um he's a force of nature and very fun to write. And um, but what I think what I really loved about him was that he he and Kike are are both Mexican, they're both Chicano, and like they share that in common, but also Manny is super protective, which is just a quality that I love in anyone. But I think in a romantic partner, you want someone who will sort of be there for you, like, no matter what. And I, and he has that in Fabiola, too. It's like, Manny is also ride or die. Um, so that's, that was, yeah. Well, and then I guess we have Kike's parents. Yeah. Um, I love his parents. Uh, they are both 34 um, because they were 17 when they had Kike. This got edited out of the book. Um, oh, funny. I, I meant to put it back in. And then I <laughs> Um, but like his his parents are are definitely like almost like they're five years older than me. Kike now is twelve years younger than me. So I definitely am like when I was writing the parents, I'm like these are my contemporaries. Like these. Are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. That's good context to know. Actually. Yeah. That puts a lot of other things into perspective for me. <laughs> it's interesting as an author because you have all this knowledge about your book that isn't necessarily in the book and but you just know it to be true um but yeah, yeah. No, I, I love Kike's mom like she's just again chaotic so he, he yeah. kind of feels in some situations with her like he's kind of trying to be the parent a little bit um so I like that because my mom's nothing like that um but Kike's mom is just you know a big drinker and really funny and blunt and yeah. like yeah she's great but yeah that's I, that's the cast yeah, I really, uh, Fabiola is definitely, like, my favorite character, but I don't think that surprises anybody in terms of, like, what I'm into, because chaos, it, let chaos reign is just my motto, personally, which is also why I really like Manny. Um, <laughs> but, so, you kind of touched base on this, but I want to know what character was the easiest for you to write, and who was the most difficult or challenging for you to write? Um... So easiest, I mean, probably Kike. Like, like I said, like I mostly just heard his inner monologue, and I could sort of, and he's very similar to me. Um, we're not the same person, 
but like we share a lot in common and we have a similar way of processing the world. Um, so it was, yeah, it was pretty easy to like, you know, make jokes about things maybe you shouldn't make jokes about. It was easy to like sort of um, show how he, again, falls in love like every three seconds with people. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, he was, he was, I just, I was, I was pretty much always tuned into him. Um, it was much, much harder, I think, to do Ziggy. Oh. Yeah. Ziggy is one, like, he could, he could be a very boring character and he could be one that like was maybe not that distinct Mm. Um, because you know i described him earlier as a politician and that type of person unless they're like you know it's house of cards or something it's someone (laughs) who will do anything to get power but that's not what this book is about he's just (laughs) he's just like really popular and charismatic it's like yeah i was i was scared that you know i wouldn't be able to find his voice um and he's also (laughs) i shouldn't say this but well I mean, I like him as a person better than Tyler, but I think Tyler as a character is just entertaining to me. Um, yeah. and, and with Ziggy, I was like, how do I like make this? Like, how do I make Kike think that he could possibly replace Celine and yeah. make, you know, them seem sort of like, like they have fun together. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, but it was, it was nice because, you know, you mentioned like, you like the chaos. So you like Fabiola yeah. and Manny. But like, I also needed someone like Salim who Kike could be the more chaotic one. And that's who yeah. he is with Ziggy. Like Ziggy brings out that side of him because Ziggy is so put together. Yeah. Um, but but it, was, it was a little hard to sort of find, I was like, how like does he speak? How like, what will he do? Like, what is his um, sort of role in this? Yeah, that's really um, interesting. I always have a really hard, because I personally, at first I thought, I was like, oh, I'm, much better at getting into the head of my own love interest than I am at um, like the main character because that was something that I had experienced with my first two books. But with the Sunbearer Trials, Teo is very easy and the like maybe love interest is so hard to write. And I think it's because they're so different from me. Um, so I'm always kind of interested in seeing how that works for other uh, writers too. Yeah. So, yeah. I, um, I was hoping we would get some like, sun bearer teaser <laughs> glimpses into the process like it's funny too like we're doing this with the story of bookshop a story bookshop is you know the bookstore i did all my shop talks with for yeah. hours with, like interviewing people and so i like i feel like i have to resist the urge <laughs> to questions about like your process and everything especially because we're <laughs> about the sun bearer trials when we did our shop talk um but uh I'm gonna I'm gonna resist but um, yes I know we're talking about you we're focusing on you and so speaking of you um what character do you relate to the most out of the books it kind of sounds like it might be Kike yeah no I definitely um (laughs) the shop talk era hi Johnny (laughs) um yeah I definitely Kike so but I I, but I do want to talk about sort of the differences between us because yeah Again, like I, <laughs> it's so funny. Like I now have um, like people's reactions to oh yeah book finally, and it's you know people when they're talking about it they'll say like oh when you do this blah 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 and I'm like <laughs> this is not a this is not an autobiography like yeah like, first of all how dare you <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that is um, I am chaotic but like in a in a slightly different way. Um, only slightly though because yeah so kiki and i are both bi we're both chicano like uh pretty far removed we're both fourth we don't know how to tell fourth or fifth generation mexican we don't know exactly where you know sort of you know we've been here a while um but he um he he doesn't do as well in school um like high school was uh for me like pretty easy because i was really competitive and then i just like you know it was just like something I could do, but I think Kike, he's obviously incredibly smart, but like he just doesn't really see the point in it. Mm-hmm. And when I was in high school, I didn't need to see the point. I just needed to see a number that made me feel like I had worth. Um, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like Kike, but Kike is kind of like he's wiser than I am at that age, and was sort of like, 
you know, he's one of those kids like, oh, what, when are we going to use a Pythagoras theorem? Um, and I was like, oh, like the length of the hypotenuse is five. Give me. Like, <laughs> um, so there's that about him. He also doesn't have like um, necessarily like a passion. And I like I was very driven in high school. I loved journalism and I, I just really mm -hmm. wanted uh, like I always had a clear vision of like where I wanted to be in the future. He is like, I don't know. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> This summer is like I just really want to fall in love. Um, yeah. And like I really want to explore that part of me, and I want to see who I am when I'm trying to be with another person uh, mm -hmm. in that way. Um, I but think mo more people should explore that more easily. Yeah, I, <laughs> there are plenty of yeah characters in this book who are just exploring. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Kiki and I definitely, and we we share the you know the mental health issues. Um, I took a lot of him in therapy. I took a lot of those mm. scenes and, you know, words of wisdom from my like first actual therapist. Um, and uh, yeah, we both like to make jokes when it's probably not appropriate to do so, <laughs> um, to sort of, you know, make light come out of the dark. Um, I yeah. Think, yeah, we share that inclination. Uh, but he's also Gen Z. Um, I am not, so I am a millennial, and uh, but he's Gen Z, and I feel like the reason he knows that he's bi at 17 is mm -hmm. thanks to and you know, like the resources that he has access to. I I sort of knew I wasn't straight at 17, but I was, I was trying really hard to convince myself that I was straight. Um, yeah. And also like, I, I felt people were like gay or straight, and there was no in between, or totally. like, it was just a binary, and so, I was like, oh, I'm straight. And then like when I would start having feelings for guys in college, I was like, oh, I'm gay. Like it, you know, I didn't really have a choice, but Kiki is like, oh, like I'm bisexual. Like it's, yeah. yeah. Or maybe I'm sexually fluid or pan or, you know, like he, like he sticks with bi cause like me, it was like the first label he found that really fit him. Yeah. And, like it's not that I'm not those other things and it's not that like he isn't those other things. So there's a little bit yeah. of that. But um, but yeah, he's Gen Z, so he's he's very different from. <laughs> <laughs> You're like just from the get go already. <laughs> Big difference, but yeah. <laughs> so another one of my favorite questions that I like to ask authors is, what was what scene was the most fun for you to write? I feel like sometimes the writing process is a bit <sighs> painful. <laughs> so I'm. Personally, I always chase down the scenes that I'm like really excited to do, and like that's what gets me through the book. Where there was there like one standout scene that was like that for you? Yeah. So it it again, I, like I I told you, like I've written other books, and like my favorite scene to write would be the one that first came to me, and it would usually be around like the end of the second act because that's when mm -hmm. everything is like blowing up. Um, but with this book, like I wrote it chronologically, and so like I didn't have like an obvious moment where I'm like this is why I'm writing the book um yeah. in this one though I do there's a chapter where um so it's it's a uh, Kike, Salim, Fabiola and someone else who I can't mention um and they they go to the beach and um it's like it's nothing almost something happens at the end of the chapter but uh <laughs> I'm like but I just remember like the beach scene in my mind was like the easiest to visualize. It was just so yeah. like, you know, I, I I grew up in LA and my favorite days would be going to the beach first with my family and then eventually with my friends. Like, you know, mm -hmm. one of my friends started driving when he was 16 and then like that meant that we had this freedom that we hadn't had before. And it was really great to sort of, you know, write that scene where Kika is, with Salim and it's like uh, and that's you know swimming is throughout the book it's summer in LA and it's you know two boys and they're like constantly swimming but there's you know there's a, there's a difference between like pool swimming and beach swimming I think and like just like the metaphorically but also just like like he's so focused on what Salim like looks like in that scene and I feel mm. like it's just it's a it's a visual chapter um yeah. and, it, and it to me like it was it was immersive in a way that i just like when i think about the book i i put myself back in there and i can just see it all um and there are a lot of like you know 
<laughs> obviously because it's me like there are a lot of inappropriate <laughs> jokes in it um they all kind of like like they pop up in that chapter and i think it, maybe they're a little surprising but um it was, it was <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and, and it's funny too like i wrote this book in 2017 like the first draft mm -hmm. and i put a new joke in it this year <laughs> That's oh, incredible. Wow, it's like, yeah, like when it's such a long process, it's like some of that writing is five, yeah, five years old, and some of it is a couple months old when, you know, yeah. um, and it's just funny to me that it just, you know, I'm like, I'll never stop thinking about this book. I will, yeah. you know, try to, to go to like other books, but I'll always be like, oh, I could have done this in this chapter, um, but I, I return to the beach scene. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. And also, I love a good beach scene. Um, a lot of my books contain beach scenes or some like form of body of water. Uh, yeah. And I, it appears that I am not stopping that anytime soon. So, <laughs> um, are there any? I don't know about you, but I like to kind of like hide little like nods and Easter eggs in my book. So it's like, if you're reading it and you come across it, if you know, you know, but if you don't, you kind of just like skim over it. Do you yeah. have any like small details or Easter eggs that you have in the book that you're kind of like excited for people to recognize? Yeah. Um, so there's, there are a couple of like, what I like that's similar is a repeating joke. Yes. Like, a, like there's one about uh, Tyler Montana where it's like people keep referring to him a certain way. Yes. It comes up in the book. I'm like, like I laugh to myself. I'm like, I did this so purposely. <laughs> um, and then there's one, oh, like something about Ziggy keeps coming up that mm -hmm. like, I like, I, I like that moment of um, it's very sitcom-y. Like it's not straight realism. It's like, if so, like the, like different people are saying the same exact thing. And to me, that's like funny. Like that comes from a yeah. time where it's like, oh, didn't blah, 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 blah. And then someone else is like, oh, didn't blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. like, why do you keep saying that? Like, I like, I love that. And so there's one about Tyler. There's one about Ziggy. Um, and then also there's a certain way that I end every chapter in the book um, that relates to the epigraph um, at the beginning of it. Um, and so that's one that I like want people to talk about um, and let yeah. me know that they like, get it um but i also it, yeah. um but uh but yeah no like I, I do hide things in there too yeah it's it's fun and it's like those small things they kind of like wait for like you said readers to be like hey was this that and you're like yes yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a personal favorite of mine as well that's it's it's fun being able to like interact with readers um in a really like the kind of just like secret little moments so I always love coming upon those in books. They're really fun. Um, just as a reminder, and like uh, very soon, we're going to jump over to doing the Q&A. So don't forget, you can ask your questions in a little question box over on the side. Actually, I think it's this side because I'm mirrored. Uh, so yeah, make sure to drop in your questions. We're going to get to those sh shortly. But in the meantime, I would love to talk about your writing process. Um, so the terms a plotter and a pantser is something that have become very common within writing. Are you more of a person who plots out your story or are you more of a person who kind of writes based on vibes and feelings and you kind of just write by the seat of your pants? Yeah, I am definitely not a plotter. Um, <laughs> I have never outlined anything in my life. Um, <laughs> I have everything I've ever written. It's, it's purely the vibes. Um, like any semblance of structure or, um, like plot, <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's something I had to go back and sort of, um, work really hard on. Uh, yeah. uh I, so I, I did a couple of like, you know, TikTok lives or Instagram lives last week, like oh, yeah. with some cool book people. And, uh, I, the metaphor I came up with, and it's a little disturbing, <laughs> but it, like, <laughs> Um, I said, it's like, if you're going to build an animal, say, say you're like a god and you're like building an animal, um, you would probably start um, with a skeleton and then you would mm -hmm. add the muscle and then the skin and then the fur. <laughs> like it's, This is how you would build an animal. Um, but with this book, I built an animal without a, without a spine. <laughs> Go back in and just 
and I shove a skeleton into <laughs> like main animal. Um, and that's why like people, I love drafting. I hate editing. Um, so funny. And people are like, oh no, I love seeing the book come alive. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like I hate having to like sort of force things. Um, my, my agent, um, who's an incredible editor, like mm. an incredible editorial agent, like she really helped me. She was like, okay, first thing you need to do is make a calendar because you know, it's Thursday on this day and you say the next day and then it's Saturday. Oh um, God, I mess that up all the time too. It's just, we don't, we're, when we're writing, we're like, who cares? <laughs> right? Who cares? Like, it's, you know, Why does this matter? Yeah, it's like a couple of days later. Uh, we don't need to know for sure. Um, but she was, she was really good at helping me sort of give it a basic, I mean, not basic, but you know, like the, the structural, like a, like a plot and then, yeah, oh. editor, yeah exactly. She gave me the <laughs> and then with the editor, it was, she was like, <laughs> she was like, oh, like there's a, there's a broken bone here. We have to break it and then reset it. Like, yeah, it was just like, yeah. Editing was, was. <laughs> it was it was stressful um you know yeah but and and I wanted to retain to sort of you know my summers as a kid felt endless they felt aimless yeah. um like I didn't really have a lot of agency um and it was this moment where you like wake up and be like what day of the week is it or you'd be <laughs> like oh my god like it's only been two days since that last thing and it felt like a year but then yeah. sometimes you'd be like where did August go you like it just like yeah that sort of like the way that time wasn't steadfast. Like I wanted that in the book. So I fought a little bit to keep it like not so plot heavy. Mm. Um, you know, people kept talking about like ticking time bombs. Yeah. And I'm like, there is no, like, <laughs> I like, I think at one point I was trying to do that and I'm like, oh, what if like he writes in his yearbook about the guys he likes? And <laughs> oh yeah. What if someone like, what if the yearbook plays a bigger role and what if someone finds it and outs him? But then I was just like, no, you're doing what like you've seen before. Like that's mm -hmm. when someone tells me to like add a plot device, I will take it from somewhere else. If it doesn't come from me, like I'll be like, okay, well, what have I seen before? And it's like, no, I don't want that moment. I don't want him outed. I don't want, you know, like his secret thoughts. Cause like, <laughs> it's also un unrealistic too. It's like, if I write something that is like, going to change my entire life if someone reads it i'm yeah. not like no one is gonna read it no you know? no one's even gonna see whatever that thing is <laughs> like exactly. or like you know i'll put a decoy or something like yeah. I'm, no <laughs> way that's happening i'm good at like protecting myself in that way like where i was as a kid because i was terrified all the yeah. time um and but like in a movie it's like oh under the mattress <laughs> and then they read it yeah. and then it's like what like uh yeah so i, I but we did, you know, come up with something. We just sort of had to make Kike a little more active. And in that yeah. way, he became less like me. <laughs> like he <laughs> became someone who was making decisions that dictated how the rest of the summer went, uh, which I think yeah. was, again, like it's the input of my agent and my three editors. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, that's so funny because I am a really hardcore plotter. Like I think the for my latest book, Summer Air Trials, I think my outline for that ended up at like 32 pages about and like that's not even my longest one that's about the average length and I I'm someone who hates drafting just so much but loves editing and revising so you and I are both on completely opposite ends of the really spectrum different. we also are, yeah yeah in different genres like that's true uh, fantasy you, there's so much you have to track it's like <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I feel like if I wrote a fantasy, I'd probably be like Aiden. <laughs> like, <laughs> like how does this you send me an outline so I know what it is. I'm like, here you go. Read my monster thesis of how to write a book. <laughs> Which I would probably enjoy, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so again, a reminder, drop in a QA. and a I only have a couple more questions before we move over to audience questions. Um, I really want to talk about your cover because it's gorgeous and amazing. And I was wondering if you could kind of walk us through what the process was like for you, like getting the cover and seeing it. Do you have a question about the title? I don't have a question about the title. Okay. So tell so us about that, that too. Yeah, that's Should like involved with it. So I guess like I'll, like I'll go into the title. I just didn't want to like, you know, talk about that. <laughs> 
you have like okay. a simple yeah. question for it. Um, but yeah, so like after I'd written the first chapter, um, I sort of just had this name pop into my head and it was, this is why they hate us. And it sort of was this, this, I think, cause I was thinking, I was sort of, as I wrote that first chapter, it's a kid who's thinking about boys because he has crushes on boys. And at, at the end of the chapter, I just sort of had this moment where I was like, this is the reason people like want people like us dead. Yeah. Like there are people who, because you, at night you like, think about a cute boy like they think that's something to like stomp out of you and I was like that is so weird to me it's like yeah like homophobia doesn't make any sense and neither does racism like it doesn't make any sense it's like you know so I kind of wanted to be like this is why they hate us because this kid was born this way um and I, I mean that it, we're not gonna get into that um but like he was you know, <laughs> he's Mexican and like he's he's queer and this is his identity and people automatically hate him his existence makes people hate him because he exists. Like, um, so like that was the title I went with. Um, and then my agent was the first one to bring up the fact that it sort of doesn't match the tone of the book. It doesn't match sort of the, oh. you know, it's not a rom-com, but it's romantic and it's funny. Yeah, and, it's very um, funny. Okay. Uh, but it's also like, yeah, it's it's like a like a sex romp. It's you know sex positive, and um, it's like all these things. And and my agent was like, it's more to all the boys I've loved before than it is the hate you give. You know, it's more of like a rom commy sweet thing than it is um, like you know an, an issue book or you know. Yeah. Um, and I was like. I think it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> and, you know, the sort of the point of this is like queer brown boys cannot always have a to all the boys I've loved before mm -hmm. without it sort of looking like the hate you give. Um, and yeah. you know, in this book, it's not police brutality. It's the brutality of homophobes who come in every shape, size and color. Mm -hmm. um, and so Kike is imagining there's one there's literally a point in the book where he's like, I want to hold this dude's hand. This is what would happen if I did. And he's envisioning yeah. like in this neighborhood, if I did this, um, like if I did this, this is what would happen. And it would involve bodily harm. Um, yeah. So, you know, my agent was like, okay, like I get it. She let it go. Cause I think she knew I was gonna have to ha like fight this again. With yeah. Her. And she was like, we'll get to that. So she sort of let it go. Um, so I did have to talk to my editor about it and she was like, we don't see the disconnect. And then she was like, I mean, she, we do see the disconnect um, between like, this is why they hate us, which sounds kind of like. Intense. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the book, which gets intense, but mm -hmm. it's sort of like, it deals with that. And then like very quickly after there's like a, a release, you know, whether it's humor or, you know, something like it's, it kind of, you know, oscillates like that um so my editor's like that we see a disconnect also like it would look homophobic if like you have this title with like two boys holding hands um uh, because i think they knew at that point like they were gonna have two boys holding hands on it <laughs> i was like but that's the point <laughs> like, yeah like i want that disconnect i want people to be like why do they who are who is they why do they hate yeah. us like i want it and you know i think it I mean, hopefully after reading the book, it's pretty obvious. It's like, well, they, you know, are hateful people. And, and then us is like everyone in the book who's marginalized in some way is hated in some way for their identity, whether it's because of their sexuality or their religion or their race or their, you know, sort of ability. Um, and so I'm like, you know, arguing with my editor and then she's like, we really need to consider alternative titles. And I wanted, you know, as like a, a brown man in publishing, I'm like, okay, let me not look like I'm being forceful and like, you know, like I wanted to be like a, a good author like for a publisher. <laughs> and so I went and I started brainstorming like new titles. And like, I, it was, you know, there are no wrong ideas in brainstorming. And so I literally started with stuff like summer boys, yeah. summer boys. Um, one of the ones I actually did like a little bit was two kids in a swimming pool. Um, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Cause like they like spend a lot of the book in swimming pools. And also that's a Frank Ocean, uh, lyric. Yeah. 
And so I'm like, I actually kind of like that, but I know they're not going to pick it. And they didn't. I ended up with like 40 alternate titles. And I said, here you go. I'm being like cooperative. I'm like listening to you, but also I don't like any of these. Yeah. I mean, like I, there's not one on here that I'm like super gung ho about. Um, But my editor of course was like, uh, actually I like this one. Um, Don't ask me how I feel. And I was like, Okay. I was, I was like, it's, you know, I'm like, it's, I guess it's not the worst thing. Um, it was a little bit similar, I think, to Don't Ask Me Where I'm From, um, which mm. was, I think, a 2020 title. Um, and Jen DeLeon is like, has been amazing and everything. Um, but I, I just remember, like, it kind of sounds like this. And, and it, it's also Simon and & Schuster. And they were like, oh, we think enough time will elapse by the time this book comes out that, like, no one's going to think Blink there's... Blink an eye or... And so we were kind of going back and forth. And then my editor was like, I'm going to give you your title because I want you to be happy. And then <laughs> what I found out later was like, like a week later, she left Simon and Schuster. Oh. And I was like, I that was her parting gift. I think she was oh. like, we're going to cement this for your yeah. title. And the second editor can't say anything about it. And this is my parting gift to you because I don't have to deal with the ramifications of <laughs> what I'm leaving. And so it actually, you know, like, and, you know, we've talked about this with like the delays and stuff is like sort of the, some of these things really did help things go well, you know, yeah. like I missed my first editor. She was the one who believed in it and bought it, but, you know, she gave, like, she really did like sort of give me this parting gift. And I was like, okay, I got the title. And then it was like, now for the cover. <laughs> <laughs> um. I felt that because I had gotten my way on the title, I didn't have as much say in the cover. I was like, they're going to hold it against me. Um, But they, you know, they asked me for covers that I liked. And they asked me for, um, like, aesthetics or maybe a scene in the book that I really loved. Yeah. Um, And so I, like, you know, I sent them a document, a numbered document. um, And I had, so this is the, uh, the UK version of, History is all you left me by our friend Adam, um, yeah. but it's sort of the same thing. I like I like silhouettes. Yeah, I literally told them I was like, I don't want to see a face. I don't like you know like an animated face. <laughs> Unless it's like breathtakingly beautiful, which like, um, like the poet X I think is 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 an incredible. Oh yeah. Thing. Um, I think Sunbearer Trials like you had a really great artist, and so it's like you know like some of them I'm like okay fine, but for mine I was like. <laughs> don't want a face and literally the first thing they said was, was like <laughs> sell marketing says that faces sell in ya so sorry <laughs> um so so i was like okay um also this idea i had it was from a different part of the book it's where they're in the, the swimming pool um and i sort of it's on it's on the first of july which is a joke in the book um and it's you know so it's i was like oh it's sunset and sunsets look like the bi flag sometimes. They do. You know, pink, purple, blue, like that. You can all find you can find that in the sky. So I was like, what if they're in the pool? And what if there's a sunset? And what if you know the fireworks are going? Like I, I was like, this looks cinematic, <laughs> cool, and you can do the silhouettes. And then I ended up not getting that. Although they <laughs> did give me this beautiful color gradient. Yeah. Um, so it's like I did get like the bi colors. Um, but I think they thought of that independently. I think the artist was like, oh, I'm going to like throw in the surprise for Aaron because it's like, yeah, it's, this is a buy book, right? It's like, yes. It's, um, so I, I remember like when I first saw the actual finished art, I was relieved. Um, you know, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but they gave me that. And it's like, uh, one of the other things too, I on the sketch, I was like, he needs more leg hair. Because, like, <laughs> growing up, I like I was made fun of for like having hairy legs. Yeah, um, like, we're a hairy um, bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah we are. Can be. And it's like when you're a preteen kid, like or a young teen kid, like boys will make fun of you for anything. <laughs> and so I was like, it was really important to me. I'm like, give him hairy legs. Make. Oh, also, I I told him to make him less thin because i'm like he literally talks in the book about like his love handles or you know one house would like uh i like put a little more meat on him 
Yeah. Um, so like I did have some feedback in that way, but with the finished cover, it's like people always compliment it. They're always like, it's so beautiful. And I'm like, Goni Montes is an incredible artist and I am forever grateful. And Simon Schuster does know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> with, yeah, like in terms of making it for the general public and not just the author. Um, not just for you personally. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, uh, and it's, it's so, uh, it's, so beautiful and i know you don't like faces but kike has a beautiful face <laughs> i loved it he has, he has really nice eyelashes <laughs> he does have nice eyelashes yeah. okay so we're gonna turn over to the q a very quickly i just have one last question for you Aaron, and that is what's next and like what else do you have you've been working on um so it's it's a little complicated because I do also write adult stuff. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I like yeah. No one reads my short stories. Um, <laughs> I like you know like I'll I'll post a short story and it's like my mom liking it and no one else. But it's like um, <laughs> I I really I really enjoy writing short stories and all but one of them are for adults um, and it's just another way to sort of explore I think life. And yeah. um, so I've published a couple stories um, and I would really like to get a short story collection out. Um, they're just notoriously hard to sell. Um, yeah. And I would have to get another agent because my agent, like my incredible agent uh, only does Kidlet. And mm -hmm. so it's sort of like, okay, like if I branch Sorry, out I to like this. literally like query again and I'm like, <laughs> I hate <that>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then I also have a novel for adults. Uh, it was like my thesis and my MFA. Um, like I, I got a good like chunk of it done, added some more. So like I have like half of it and it's about nice. a guy who gets on a plane knowing it's going to crash. Um, oh. But that's sort of just a frame for like him reflecting on his life, which is maybe the most boring thing to do to something that actually has a plot. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, no, I want to talk about death and like hating yourself. Um, <laughs> So I, I, I want to finish that, but again, like I would have to get an agent for it. And it's just, you know, it's, I, and the, the thing, my third project is YA. So it's like, you know, I really should go to that because I know like, cause I have a book out and like, maybe it'll be easier to like sell this book. Um, and this one I've, I've written 50 pages. Um, and I did kind of have to outline because like we're going for a proposal sort of thing. Mm. And um, so I'm like, but I, I do, I think I really know like what I want to happen at the end. Um, and I have the characters and I like wrote it and it's, uh, it's very different, um, but I like it. So it's about high school journalism. Um, I mentioned that earlier, like when yeah. I was, I like, so this new character I think is going to be a little bit He's gonna be an exaggerated version of me in high school, like very, uh, well, <laughs> losery, I guess. <laughs> um, like obsessed with journalism and then also just um, like very intense about things that won't end up mattering. Um, but he, it's interesting to put all my, like my Capricorn energy into him because I'm a cat yeah. writer. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how it, how it goes. Um, but I think one of the reasons like one of the obstacles we're kind of coming into is um, we don't know if Gen Z is that into like print journalism, like having yeah. a school newspaper. I asked a high school student the other day because she was interviewing me um, about like my book. And I asked her about like print newspaper and, and she was like, they pass them out in English class and then everyone leaves them on the desk when they go. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you're like, oh God. I'm like, do they read it before they leave? And she's like, no, they just leave it there. <laughs> And I'm like, harsh. Cool. Awesome. But I, I'll have to try and figure out that angle. But um, I yeah. Think you so can the, definitely plot your way out of that. There's there's some tricks. That will, um, we shall see it and we shall see what comes next. I'm I am thrilled either way. I am oh. very excited. You have created a lifelong reader out of me personally. Um, Oh. And very early on in the book, I was just like, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm sold on this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to bounce over to the Q&A. We have a couple of really good ones um, before we run out of time. Uh, the first one is, did you ever make a playlist for This Is Why They Hate Us? 
And I guess, which also poses the question, do you listen to music while you write? Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, when I'm drafting, I'm listening to music. Um, and I try very, I usually do albums just because I won't have to like toggle as much and like yeah. focus too much on doing the music. So I'll like play an album. Um, Taylor Swift is just very easy to um, write to because she's such a storyteller and it's always high emotion. And so I, uh, yeah, no, I really, she's sort of my default, but I have a lot of other stuff that I, I write to. Um, but there is, I'm, the reason I'm like scrolling and stuff is I'm trying to see if I, yeah. So I do have a playlist for This Is Why They Hate Us. And let's see if I can put it in the chat. Oh, nice. and it's flagged as yeah. like spam. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there is a playlist. It, it features almost exclusively queer um, artists. Amazing. Um, so it's like Brockhampton, uh, Frank Ocean, Troy Sivan, Mashri Lila, Tyler Glenn, Lil Nas X, Moses Sani, yes. Sam Smith featuring Normani, uh, Tanache, The Internet, Halsey, Tegan and Sarah, Green Day, because um, Billy Joe Armstrong is uh, I. Uh, you know, then, I used to tutor a boy who was in a band with Billy Joe Armstrong's uh, son back in Oakland. That's so cool. And kind of very Oakland. <laughs> like, very Oakland, yeah. <laughs> Oakland thing. Um, but yeah, no, he's by icon. I uh, love him. And then not queer, Beyonce and Mariah Carey. But I mean, we make exceptions for them. Um, and then we have Rita Indiana, um, who's a Dominican artist. And her song is like referenced in the book. And then Muna. Uh, closes out the playlist. So mm. I really I wanted queer artists, and then I included two non queer artists whose songs are referenced in the book because Celine has the adorably stupid ability to miss her song lyrics. Oh uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. Trying to not give a bunch of spoilers and just keep wanting to like say stuff, but yes, <laughs> that is very cute. <laughs> uh, Okay, I like this question too, and then I think we might be at time. Um, but what is your favorite chapter? And this is why they hate us, without spoilers. Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned it. The the beach chapter I think is my favorite um, yeah. for all the reasons I I, I said before. Um, but I also I don't know if this is the case with you, but I like the end of my book better because it's like fresher. Um, yeah. so when I'm rereading my book, I struggle at the beginning because I'm like, oh, I remember working on this first chapter for like <gasps> six million hours. If I never read the first two chapters of Cemetery Boys ever again, I will be just fine. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's so hard just like going to the beginning get, and you're like, I know everyone, come on, fast forward. <laughs> um, but by the end, like when I'm reading my own book and I just did it recently with the audio book, which is incredible. Like. Oh. Alejandro Ruiz is mm. so incredible. They're a non-binary Latinx um, actor. Um, did Alejandro Ruiz, you said? Alejandro Ruiz. Okay, so my man's running me down. <laughs> yeah, um, like they are incredible. Like they're so good. Um, they do Kike really well, and then they do Manny really well. Um, yeah. Like the, I had this vision for how Manny talks, um, and it's very East LA. And um, I was like hearing narrators and like they weren't getting him right. I'm like, yeah. I was like, you sort of have to know this type of guy in real life to do it. And Alejandro does like absolutely nails it. Um, so yeah, check out the audio book. It's, 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 I, and it's just, it's so great hearing it like my own words, but like yeah. reflections and like, you know, different ways to say things. And it's, it's super cool. Um, I forgot, why were we? Your favorite chapter, but I think we covered that. Oh yeah, yeah. and then yeah. by the end of the by the end of the book, I'm like sort of like yeah, like then what happens? <laughs> because yeah. You know. yeah, and my gosh, I think somehow that is all the time we have left. I think. Um, oh my gosh, Erin, this was literally so much fun. Um, I thank you so much for inviting me. I am really excited for people to discover and be able to read this book. 
finally, now that it's out in the world. Um, yeah, I am thrilled, so happy for you, very excited. And it's been honestly such a joy to see you on this whole journey because I feel like we connected really early on. Um, and yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aiden. And I just like, you've been so supportive, not just the blur, That's but just cool. like, you know, asking you questions about the business and stuff and then like yeah. just on social media and like you're so great and I really 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 appreciate it even though I don't have an advanced copy of Sunbear like Sunbear's trial <laughs> it's fine um <laughs> I will get you one like immediately I swear to god I'll do it well it, it comes out soon it's 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 fine um but I <laughs> I yeah I'm sure we'll see each other around and just thank you so much Absolutely. for doing this yeah. yeah. And again, thank you everyone for coming. If you haven't ordered your copy yet, there's a pretty little green button right down there and you can get your own copy. Um, and thank you so much for the Astoria Bookshop for hosting us. Obviously, Aaron's a fan. I'm also a big fan. Um, it was wonderful getting to talk to you all. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your, the week. Aaron, enjoy the rest of your launch week. Thank you. I'm going to try. Um, if anyone is in New York on Friday, um, I'll be at Sorry, I feel like I'm cheating on Astoria Bookshop, but like um, <laughs> it felt right to do a virtual event with Astoria Bookshop because we had been doing shop talks. Um, but if you want to see me in person, I will be at Books of Wonder, but I will also be signing books at Astoria Bookshop. So if you want to go after Friday and pick up a signed <laughs> copy from Astoria Bookshop, you should definitely do that. But also just check my website for events. Um, I guess. Wonderful. Yeah. Perfect. Y'all have a good night. Thank you so, so much for coming.